major issue for some people. Fears that the deer will attack them and their children have led some to take steps to protect themselves, including constructing massive fences around properties to keep deer out. It was only when um, I found females in here, two big deer, um, destroying the place that I put up the deer netting. And originally I left the front unfenced because everything planted there was supposed to be deer proof. But there is no such thing because even if they don't eat it, by the time 12 deer have sampled it and spit it out, they've killed the trees or the plants or the perennials or the bushes. So then I put up deer fencing. And there's another issue that I think is very important and that is health and safety. If I have to work the yard, which I do primarily by myself, I can't be dodging piles of deer feces, which contain all sorts of unsavory things, including prion and wasting disease. It wasn't a big problem. Additionally, initially, I didn't have the landscaping. Uh, this is 19 years of blood, sweat and tears, and a lot of money. <laughs> Attacks are not the only concern. Tick-borne diseases, particularly Lyme disease, are spread by deer and local residents are increasingly concerned this is being exacerbated by the perceived spillover of deer into residential areas. Uh, many of the tick-borne diseases that affect pe people can definitely have long-term effects if left untreated. Fortunately, uh, there are a number of routine tests that a doctor can do if they're looking for uh, these type of diseases that will identify it. And if they're found early, people can be, can be put on a heavy course of antibiotics and essentially, you know, reduce the risk for any type of long-term impact. Problems occur when you, uh, these type of diseases move into an area and are relatively new. The doctors don't look for them and they suspect other things. So sometimes people may carry an illness, tick-borne illness, for six months, a year, maybe even two years before it's correctly identified. And that's when there's a real chance for long-term health consequences. Uh, permanent joint damage, permanent neuro neurological damage, it can uh, cause people to suffer long-term illness and maybe even uh, have to lose their job or be debilitated. I wouldn't want to leave my six-year-old out in the yard when they are there. I would worry about his safety. I can't be worrying about the ticks because if I get Lyme disease, I won't be able to work the yard. And if I confront deer, which I did on a regular basis by taking my shoe and throwing it at them, they simply stand there and paw the ground and snort. And if you get a male in the rutting season, he'll charge you. But these plans have attracted some serious opposition. Kayugadeer.org is one organisation fiercely opposed to the proposal. Their website publicly and personally attacks members of the Cayuga Heights Council, including Mayor Supron, that support the program. Cayugadeer.org uses such incendiary terms such as backyard slaughter and has a Facebook page which has attracted over 500 members. Financially backed by local magnate Adelaide Park, the founders even attend and record local board meetings, which frustrates Mayor Supron. They sort of parse up the films. Um, my view is that they are not into dialogue, they're not into joint fact-finding. They, um, since we disagree, their tactic is really one of demonizing the, the mayor and the board of trustees and anybody who thinks that we need to bring our deer population down. Um, rather than a respectful discourse and disagreement. But the founders of KuyugaDeer.org flatly reject lethal culling as an option for reducing deer populations. For experts such as Paul Curtis, however, this simply isn't an option. Uh, mauling research has shown in the past that removal of adult female deer has more than twice the impact of uh, fertility control because deer are long-lived species and uh, adult females tend to produce two or sometimes three fawns on good range. But regardless of the outcome of the board's decision, residents remain divided on this issue. I don't have a problem shooting deer. I would like to think that the deer meat could be used, but that's apparently unrealistic. Any t anything to do with killing with them would be totally out of my, I wouldn't support that. Despite the controversy, it will be at least six months before any part of Cougar Heights program goes into effect.